Hello everybody, my name is Micah, and today get ready for something new and exciting because we are making Jesper! Wait, you don't know Jesper? Well of course you wouldn't, they're a character I made myself! This time we'll be designing a character from scratch and turning them into a weighted, huggable, and ridiculously cuddly plush. But first we have to thank our commenting overlords, which today is I Just Want Pancakes, who became a lord of the comment section by finding last video's secret word. Your comment fills my heart to the brim like a bad stomach at a mosquito family reunion. R.I.P. Uncle Ben. First off, let's talk about this character. Jesper is a young, bat-like temple guardian. They live all alone in a remote temple filled with artifacts and rare valuables, tasked with the responsibility of protecting everything within. They're pretty lonely living there all by themselves, but keep a positive attitude nevertheless. Jesper was actually designed both after the fur I already had lying around and to be the perfect sensory push for myself. They'll have king's body, extra weight, bat wings to plump them up a bit, and of course, the silkiest fur imaginable. You might you might have noticed I keep using they them pronouns for Jesper. I think one could also use he him for them, but because I want to drive it home that this character is very much not a boy or a girl, I'll use they them for this video. Now that you've seen the entirety of my concept page and heard a bit about Jesper, let's get into the plush making. Next up, the fabric. I have officially hit my fur quota for this year. If I ever mention wanting to make a fur based plushie again for the rest of the year, someone please knock some sense into me and point me towards this video because holy shit, do I hate working with fur. You might be wondering, why do you make anything with fur then? Well, because it makes such amazing plushies. They're so soft and silky. How could I refuse? So on I go, cutting out my fur pieces and starting the awful process of making a fur-based plushie once again. I have cut out a lot of the negativity about this project, so if you want to hear every little complaint I had, make sure you come back next week for the plushie breakdown. In case you didn't know, the fur I use is extremely slippery. I have to be extra careful as I'm pinning my patterns because otherwise they may just slip out of place. I use tons of extra pins with this fabric, which leads to many more opportunities to accidentally stab myself. To be fair, it was mainly the light gray that was causing the most problems, as the other colors were older and had been handled more, leading them to lose some of their slipperiness. That doesn't help that much, seeing as the light gray is the majority of the body, but hey, no one said looking on the bright side of things was looking on the bigger side of things. I did end up using a tactic I heard of but had never used before to help with cutting the fur this time because of this. After cutting out my pieces, I realized the fabric had scrunched up underneath the pattern, leaving me with a weird misshapen blob. And this wasn't the only piece it happened to either. Thankfully, I had just enough fur to recut these pieces correctly this time by cutting on the back side of the fur. The reason I never wanted to do this before was because I didn't like that I couldn't see the direction the fur was laying. Yes, I could check before I cut anything, but as we've learned from previous videos, the universe doesn't really like me too much, meaning it's very likely I'd still cut the pieces wrong. This time, however, it did actually seem to work. See? Much better. Now let's move on to the first round of pinning and sewing. As you may have noticed, Jesper is in fact a bat, and these bat wings are honestly so hard to sew. I only discovered a way to make sure they stay nice and flat during this project. And I've made multiple bats before this. Usually the middle panel has some pinching at the top, which this does fix. Unfortunately, this doesn't actually make it any easier to sew, it just makes it look a little cleaner. But you know what is easy? Getting the first part of the secret word. Today, That'll be F U. And no, I'm not cursing at you, those are the first two letters of the secret word. In case you're new, that secret word is both a hint of what plushie is coming next, and if you leave a comment with the full secret word in a way that doesn't immediately let everyone know it's the secret word, you may get featured at the start of the next video as a lord of the comment section. Next, let's take a look at Jesper's neck fluff. This is a design I tried to do in the past and just couldn't get it right. Turns out that attempt was a long time ago because when I went to make it this time, it was extremely simple. With all that done, I'll just use a little magic to turn it right side too, and then throw a little bit of stuffing into each puff ball in the line to give it a little extra fluff. The neck fluff done, I can move along to the next batch of sewing. I'll start by attaching the toe claws just like I did on my king plushie, but this time I actually know what I'm doing. And then I'll add some details before getting into the bulk of the light gray pieces. Now 
Next up are the cute but tedious wings. Now that I have one wing done, I can use my copy-paste magic to snap the other three into existence. Now I have two perfectly imperfect sets of bat wings. Then I'll pin the pairs together and the wings should be just about done. And then, the only thing worse than the wings, the face. This? This was an ungodly level of torture. The slippery fabric, the measuring and remeasuring, the fur obscuring the pins. I was just about ready to scrap this whole project, if I'm honest. The only thing that kept me going was the fact that I had spent way too much time on this project already, and that the fur was so damn expensive. Eventually, I got the face on and just prayed it was in the right place because there was no way in hell I was doing that again. Then, because I had to use some temporary fabric and stitching to fit the piece in my embroidery hoop, I needed to seam rip all of that out. While this stuff is usually hidden because of how close it is to the edge of the pattern, this time it was extra hidden because of all that fur. What was fun about all this though was pulling off the thread that didn't get cut while I was seam ripping, like picking up a big ol' noodle. But safety first, I made sure to cut that piece up extremely small and threw it away with all my other thread bits in a covered garbage can. This is because I have cats. If you don't know already, cats are notorious for getting into thread and eating it, causing it to wrap up their intestines and possibly leading to their death. We had a scare with one of my cats, Prim, a while back, before I was even sewing, and she got into some of my mom's thread while we were on a vacation. It was really, really scary, so please, if you have pets and you have stray thread around, even just from clothes, cut it up and throw it away. Okay, maybe I got a little dark there, so let's brighten things back up. We now have Jesper's face all ready to go, so it's time to add on the ears. I actually changed how I attach the ears like this that have foam in them because of my last project. Bluey, there were some complications, which led me to start attaching these kinds of ears directly to my head pattern rather than sticking the finished ear in a seam. And now we attach the front of the head to the front of the body. It was at this point that I was feeling really good about how things were going. All my details were done, the embroidery and wings were in the past. I was ready for smooth sailing to the end of this project. Everything was going great. I sewed the body pieces together, piece of cake. I did almost forget to put the foam under the ears as I sewed them, but that was an easy fix. And for once, it seemed like the universe had smiled down on this project. The next step was to sew on the arms, and I wasn't worried in the slightest. I just squished them on and... Wait, where's the other arm? What? What the hell? How did I sew an arm on the back of the head? Ugh. Okay, it's fine. Everything's fine. I just got mixed up because of all of the fur. I'll just fix it. There. See? All good. Are you kidding me? The arms are on the wrong sides? There! Done! the arms, we're moving on. <sighs> okay, we are going to calmly put the tag in and close up the body. Is trying to close up a body with wings also one of the most infuriating things I could be doing right about now? Yes, yes it is. And we will handle it with poise and grace off camera. There. Now, doesn't that feel so much better? Then all we have to do is sew up the back seam to finish off the body, close off the inner seam of the legs, and add on our itty bitty feetsies. I honestly just love how cute these little claws are. Almost makes me forget about all the trouble it was to get this far. Almost. 
And finally, let's get this little menace turned right side too. This is always my favorite part of these projects. I may say that it's bean time, but this part always feels like I'm finally getting to see how my work turned out. Even though things can look very different after they're stuffed. I'll put the skin aside for now and get to work on the last couple of details. Their little batty nose and their pendant. The nose was easy enough to throw together, though I did have to remake a bigger one for this plush a little bit later. The pendant, however, caused quite a bit more trouble. See, when sewing a circle inside of a circle, your pattern has to be absolutely perfect. And that is a tough bar to reach. It was okay though. It took a couple of attempts, but now we can move on to the foam. This is so the pendant will hold its shape a little bit better. Honestly, I don't know what I'd do without foam. It's a lifesaver. Now we'll turn it right side too, and I'll attach it to this collar that magically appeared out of thin air. But first, back to the plush. Little baby Jesper themselves, because you know what time it is? It's bean time! Well, actually it's stuff the head and toes time first, but then it's bean time. Now we stuff the rest of the plush. With the babe all stuffed, we'll take a moment to pick all of the seams to release the stuck down fur. And now for one of the most nerve wracking parts of any fur based project. I have to give Jesper a little haircut. You just couldn't see their eyes, so I had to trim back the fur. But this fur doesn't grow back like my hair after I tried bangs at 14. One bad snip and it was over. Thankfully, the first eye went pretty well and I trimmed up around the second eye right after. It took a little evening out, but it looks... Okay, I just wish I could get it smoother is all, but it still looks all right. Now it's time to finally get on the train to Hanso Town. We've got a lovely array of thread colors here for all the bits that need to be sewn. And I apologize in advance for this section of the video. The light from the window was messing with my camera, so it'll be a little funky while I finish this little guy up. We'll start off with the nose. This part is simple enough, but once again, the slippiness of the fur was trying to cause issues. Thankfully, with enough pins, I was able to hold it in place long enough to get this piece on. Next up, the teeth. Now, I can only show you footage of me sewing on one of Jesper's teeth. That's because I promised myself that I would try and keep the rest of this video relatively positive, and I literally had to shut off the camera again because of this other tooth. Whether you saw it or not, both teeth are now sewn firmly in place, and we can finally move on to sewing up the fuzzy parts of this plush. First, I sewed on the little hair floof. And then I went and sewed up the back of the plush, which is usually the final step to a plush like this. But because of all the fur, there's definitely a non-zero number of holes hiding around here that need to be sewn up as well. Then we'll plop Jesper's neck fluff on and move on to the very last accessory, the amulet. This one was super quick, just sewing up the hole and attaching it to the collar. And with the amulet finished, I'll pick out a few more seams to fluff them up even more. And then I think we're just about done here and ready for the glamour shots. everyone, thank you so much for watching. This project really beat me down. So knowing that it can bring at least a little joy to you all makes it that much more worth it. As you can see on screen are my lovely pixie tier patrons for April and an empty spot for my bear tier patrons who don't quite exist yet, but would get their names highlighted up here if they did. You may have noticed I didn't mention a giveaway yet. That's because this plushie won't have a giveaway. And instead, surprise, I'm doing two plushies this month. And the next plushie coming out on May 20th, we'll have a Patreon giveaway that I'm sure will click with many of my spooky story enjoyers out there. Oh, and the second half of letters for your secret word are NGI. That's the last of them. Your secret word is complete. Now go forth and secretly slip it into a comment below this video. And maybe hit that subscribe button on your way down too. But hey, if you like this plushie, check out my last fur based plushie, King from the Owl House. Thanks for watching. Remember, don't let any tough project get you down, and I'll see you all next time.